a lot of people think the law of attraction is you attract the things that you most think about. Right? I believe differently. I believe that there's something in your brain called the RAS, your reticular activating system. And how the RAS works is it allows you to see the things, right? Now that you can see them. So if you're driving a red Mustang, you see other red Mustangs on the highway perhaps that you've not seen. Mm -hmm. So then it tells you that your brain's dumping information at an unbelievable rate, right? Because it has to take in a lot. It helps you recognize all the things that you want to and focus on those things. So instead of you attracting it, you're attracted to it. That is how I think the law works. Welcome back to Since 3000. I'm Danielle Leslie, and I'm so excited to bring you my best friend, Sean Derrick, today. Two first names, like me. We bonded a decade ago. He's one of the few people in my life who I've been friends with for a whole 10 years. He saw me from the very beginning. In fact, he had a show, The Hard Part Show, which was huge on Facebook and he called me out in an episode called Call Out Season and he was part of the inspiration for me to actually launch my course business and launch course from scratch. I have him right here on the couch with me. When I met him, he was already killing it as a speaker. So he has spoken all over the world. He is a true storyteller. He's been in front of live audiences of over 700,000 people. And then he's moved to the internet and become internet Jesus. His skits have been viewed by millions of people. But what I will say above and all is he has really showed me what friendship, true friendship looks like. And in today's interview, you're gonna get a glimpse into what it looks like for me to hang out with one of my best friends ever, who has inspired me from day one to be a dreamer and make those things happen. And you're gonna find someone who has codified their knowledge into a speaker hack course, in addition to continuing to bless not only me and every person he's in the room with, I call him the mayor of Harlem. He's left his footprint blueprint all over the place and you're gonna hear all about it. So Sean, welcome to Since 3000. Damn, codified. That's, yes! That's amazing. <laughs> so it is. $50,000 word, codify. I follow that. Thank you so much for having me here. What is up? I Let's go. Word. I'm so excited to bring you today's episode, but before we do, I need to make sure you've heard about Member Up. So community-driven products are the future, but Facebook groups are a thing of the past. And after 10 plus years in the online education space, I've taken all my learnings and I've built this incredible platform, Member Up. It's a customizable, easy to use, all in one platform where you can build a premium course, community, or membership site without the tech headache. Gone are the days of having to duct tape together your content, your community, your payments, all on different platforms. I want you to do me a favor, do yourself a favor and head over right now to memberup.com forward slash Danielle and you can get started for free today. I promise you, I, ooh, I can't wait for you to see this platform. It's beautiful, okay? The design is amazing. Your community is gonna feel at home here and you are gonna take pride in your online business. It is the place to start. Head over to memberup.com forward slash Danielle. Now let's get into the episode. I'm just gonna start talking. Okay. It's really hard not to just start to be motivational, right? <laughs> but I will say, because I was trying to tell um, some of the people in this room who have now become ninjas. Who know, <laughs> the boots, last time you wore those crazy sparkly boots, you remember we went to, do you remember? So we went, yes. to, we did, went to MJ the musical, everybody. Yes. And she walks in and the whole crowd was like, I got her a slow-mo walking in. You did. Absolutely. Do you remember we met afterwards and we're Oh my gosh, up? we were crying. I was at this random spot just crying. We were crying, thug tears. I had a very strong tear that came down like, Ruh. no, we were crying. That show was ridiculously uh, uh, life-changing for me uh, because for all those watching, uh, MJ is the truth. That's MJ and Prince. Those are my spirit animals. If I could be two people, just push them into one. MJ and Prince, who would you be? Well, I'm curious. So if we go back to that show, mm -hmm. what was like the number one takeaway for you? Like what resonated the most? Because we talked a lot about it afterwards. What was the thing was, that hit you the most? Michael Jackson was the first person 
who introduced magic to me. Mm. You know what I mean? And everything, like everything he did was magic, right? From the lean to the moonwalk, it was like always defying something, right? Uh, and so the show was just, uh, it was so nostalgic. I was like thinking about the first time I learned how to do the moonwalk or the first time I saw a moonwalker at my cousin's house in Atlanta, Georgia, and I could not, like the next day, trying to go back in Columbus, Ohio to school when I was like, I gotta tell y'all something. There's a man that exists and he can lean in the air, <laughs> you know, trying to tell the you know, five-year-old friends that, about Michael Jackson. It just took me back. But the thing that stuck, stuck out to me the most was um, how free he felt on the stage. Michael, people like Prince, these people are introverts. I'm very much an introvert. And a lot of people think that I'm not, but I'm a lot more comfortable on the stage. It feels like home uh, when I'm contributing at that level, the high vibration. When you um, get a reaction from people, you know, when they laugh or they cry, they think, you can feel it in the room, it's palpable. You can actually, you can actually, like, sh you can touch it, you can feel it. And uh, that show, we were sitting at both of us, we're sitting there like, oh my God, mm -hmm. Michael's here, it was dope. This is so special for me because I have shared with guests already about our limo ride. I have shared with them how we were on that rooftop mm -hmm. and you came in your trench coat knowing <laughs> it was winter in New York and I was in my bubble coat and you were freezing. I was freezing too, but you were extra freezing because we weren't in the igloo. Right. And we said we want, you said we want champagne and some warmth mm -hmm. at the next spot. And we walked champagne. downstairs and there was a line of limos. There are like five or six limos outside, y'all. By the way, I'm gonna grab this picture because this photo is actually that photo. <laughs> this, this is the only photo yeah. I have. Yeah. Right here. Legit, yeah. In my living room, and it is of me and Sean. Y'all, evidence of the trench coat. Do you see I also coat? want y'all to notice Danny's <laughs> outfit. Okay. Danny's properly dressed. Okay. <laughs> she is. He is it in was the trench coat. So this two is degrees. the moment. This is the moment right here. Now, what I know about you yeah. when I'm with you, it is that moment all the time. So mm -hmm. you say, this is what I see. And then we create that. And we walked downstairs and there was a line of limos and Tony was there and he said, would you like to take a ride with me in the limo? It's warm and I have champagne for you and I could drive you around. And we drove around and we toasted. We toasted. We gonna do a toast right now. We toasted to us. We toasted to the future and what we were gonna create that year. Cheers to that. Cheers. We said, we were gonna have a show. What are we on right now, Sean? Oh my God, we're on a show. We on a motherfucking show. We on a damn show. We on a motherfucking show. Yeah, I will say this. One thing I really enjoy about you, um, we create magic together, of course, but you always see things like it's the first time. So it makes it easier for me to create. I said, wait, if we do this, we walked in the limo, the way your eyes lit up, you've been in limos before. You were like, can you believe this? <laughs> I was like, I mean, yeah, I mean, no, but <laughs> I kind of can, you know. And then we champagne. Now, we, I'm sure the champagne was off. I'm sure. But it wasn't. Danny was like, Danny was like, oh! I'm in a $500 bottle. <laughs> Danny said, oh, did you taste this? Like, oh my God, this, this plastic glass makes it taste amazing. Everything you do, right, it seems like you're doing for the first time. That's what makes it fun to create with you, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel like that every time I'm like, let's do this idea and you get excited about it. By the way, I don't know if y'all talked about this on the show already. Uh, human design. A little bit. What you want to say about it though? Well, <laughs> what I found out about me <laughs> Don't be mad. Shade coming in strong. Go ahead. Tell the people your truth. I am a manif manifesting generator, right? Mm-hmm. Y'all know what that is. Maybe you do. <laughs> I quite, I still don't quite know what it is. You're a generator, right? Mm -hmm. So I was getting so hype. I'm looking at this camera like it's my show. I was getting so hype. You really are, though. Oh, You're so like, sorry. hello, people. Right, hello, people. Thank Listen you so much in. for coming. My name is Sean Derek, speaker for the Dreamer. Thanks for coming to my show. Right, right. Thank you for coming to my show. Hey, my show. You stop. 
I'm a manifesting generator, uh, and she's a generator. So uh, when you look at your human design chart, you'll see different parts of right, your being that are lit up. Uh, and you know you're a generator because there's this little box at the bottom that you call your sacral, right? And so generators, when they make decisions, they make it from their gut. It's guttural. It's very like, ah, I, didn't, I didn't feel, I didn't feel. And one, Dan, one thing Danny would say all the time is when making her decisions is if it's not a hell yes, it's a what? Fuck no. Okay, I was going to say hell no, but the key oh. is. It's okay. If it's not a fuck yes, it's a hell no? No, you're right. Fuck, oh, fuck yes. Fuck. No, no, fuck, okay. fuck's better. Okay. Fuck's better. Okay. Fuck is my favorite curse word. <laughs> I feel like that's yours too. <laughs> Alright, cool. Yeah, so she's like, if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. Right? That is some generator shit. Of course she would say that. Mm. So then I was excited because I was a different type of generator that Danny's not. I was like, I'm manifesting generator. I'm like, oh, how's a generator life going for you? It's cute. It's great. So then we get to our friend's retreat and we all get our charts, you know. And I'm so competitive. I'm looking at my chart. I'm like, oh, what are you? Oh, you're a projector. That's cute. So um, mine are, uh, yours not as lit up as mine, right? We get to Danny's chart. Her whole chart is lit. And I was like, okay, what's that mean? Because that's different from, <laughs> it's different from what I have. Um, oh, no, it's, no, everyone's, everyone's here to do something different. <laughs> everyone's here to do something different, to add something different to the world. Everyone's here. I'm like, all right, okay, why are you trying to get me? Then we go to this workshop. We go to this <laughs> human design. I'm like, all right, my, my homie gonna tell me something because right now Danielle's chart is all the way lit up. You, and you're not supposed to compare yourself to people, you know what I'm saying? Oh, However, <laughs> so I'm like, all right, cool. So they're saying, you know, he's just like, oh yeah, this this percentage of the population are generates this percentage. I was like, oh, that's cute. Danny's in the seventy percent, huh? He's common. And then he goes, wait, Danny, no. Oh, that's right. You're this type of generator. You're in the 1%. Less than 1%. Less than. All right. It's your being, show. No, I'm it's okay. Just being accurate. It's your I'm show. Just... She can do that. <laughs> that's human design, everybody. That's why she's here in her show on her set, right? And I'm on this side of the microphone. <laughs> what did you learn about uh, human design for you? <laughs> Let me interview you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, what I will say is, what have I learned? I think one thing I've taken away is because all my centers are defined and I guess that means I'm emitting signals all the time, there's of course with everything, two sides to the coin. Yeah. One side of the coin when I'm in my design, I can send those signals. Um, another side of the coin is that the person on the receiving end, if they have open centers, they are receiving my signals. So if I'm in a low vibrational state, mm. they will receive those signals. And guess what they're gonna send back to me? What I'm sending to them. I see. So what I will get back is what I'm putting out. So it taught me that I have the ability like all of us frankly yeah. but i know that i have the ability to set the tone and it helped me just take more ownership of where i am like where am i vibrating what am i putting out because i'm gonna get that right back yeah. so not only is it impacting the other person um but it's also going to come back to me and i'm gonna think it's the other person but it's really me like it really starts here Mm -hmm. I feel like that spoke to my spirit. Mm. Most recently, uh, Danielle was telling me I was acting an ass, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, can I share though what sure. I appreciate? Sure. So, okay, Sean, what you've done for me yeah. is you have shown me what it looks like to turn friends into family. Mm. So we met a decade ago, like we're celebrating our 10 year anniversary. We met in 2012. Oh my God. And I was broke. I was living at my mom's. She ain't look broke though, y'all. <laughs> I come on now. She didn't look broke. Remember that maxi dress? I was thinking about my <laughs> IG, the IG post of us at brunch in Harlem. So Sean is the mayor of Harlem. Okay. And we're sitting at brunch. You still are. Like seriously, you're you're 
your blueprint, your footprint is there. Your energy is there. The fact that you did an event at Langston Hughes mm -hmm. home, correct? His former mm -hmm. home. You brought Broadway stars. You brought mm -hmm. people who are so talented to give their gifts on stage. And then you had people like me in the room who were like, oh my gosh, what's going on? I need to wear black. I'm wearing who's navy blue dress. Who was wearing the best dress. That was navy blue. In the room. She was wearing a Grammy dress. In her own. What do you think this is? You don't but it was navy blue. Parties, it wasn't black. Better than it was navy blue. It was never. <laughs> the theme was black. I wore navy blue. Was black. She was like, what rule? Walked in. Yeah. But we met a decade ago. I had, I was figuring it out. And what we had in common is that we really valued our dreams. You've always been the speaker for the dreamer. And that means the speaker for your own dreams and for others in the room. Mm -hmm. And I really resonated with that. And it's so wild when I look back at the fact that like we are still friends. You're one of a, a short, very short list of people who I've been friends with for a decade. Yeah. You know my mom, you know my sister, you know my dad. Like you've spent time, my brother, you spent time with all of them without me and had a great time. Like you truly showed me what it looks like to turn friends into family. Yeah. And one thing I learned from you was uh, what intimacy means. Like. Platonic intimacy is to be able to come as you are, yeah. to tell your truth in real time, be transparent, and feel safe in that. And I remember we um, hung out in Harlem one time and you took me on the Vespa, got on the back of it, and I was having a hard time. <laughs> and you're like, let's go for a ride. And we hopped on the back. All of you were having like, a hard time on the Vespa. Not at all, okay. the Vespa was great. Right, I was having right. a hard time in life. Oh, I see. And yeah. we took a ride, and then we got out, and we got these amazing margaritas. Amazing margaritas. Oh, my gosh. Right. And I just remember sharing with you my views on relationships. And they weren't traditional. They weren't conventional. And I felt shame around it. felt guilt around it. And you were one of the first people to show me and demonstrate, like, it's okay. You are one of those people who normalizes everything. Because everything is, quote, unquote, normal. That's right. Like there is no good, bad, or this is okay, this is not okay. And I really like credit you to this day for me feeling amazing, more than okay, with like being myself, expressing myself. And I would say like you're a big reason for why I am where I am today, which is like feeling comfortable in my skin, wearing this, you know what I'm saying? You inspire this, um, living this life, um, and also being able to turn other friends into family. So what I want to ask you is when you look at your relationships, we'd be out in whether it's Oaxaca, um, where do we go for Tara's birthday? DR. Oh, Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. DR. And you're FaceTiming other friends, inviting them into the experience. But what I want to ask you is how have you been able to turn friends into family? Like, what does that look like? Oh, we're getting deep. I... I lost a, a family member, um, my father, at 14. And I think when you lose someone that close to you, there's a, there's a you don't, I don't think people realize that people can pass away until you lose someone so close to you. That was my first time realizing that um, life was so finite, right? It was very like, this is, we're here to do something and then we're not going to be here anymore, right? Physically here. Uh, so then when I got to New York City, um, the only way to have family forever is to collect people, right? And continue to, you know, insert people into your own life, right? Um, and that is, that's what I've done, right? Every time I meet someone, I try not to have any strangers, but that's the, that's the only way. And I think it's me somehow trying to prevent, not trying to do deep, somehow trying to prevent not losing everyone. Um, we lost our father, our protector, our breadwinner, right, our guide, uh, and we didn't have that, you know, all through high school. Um, if I meet someone and that friend is, has got wonderful qualities, I can have family forever and I continue to build my family forever. Um, so as your family, you know, passes away or they move on, they, 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 die, they die off, you have family everywhere, you know. Even to this most recent move outside of the country is that 
I know I can make family uh, everywhere. And I, I credit that to um, realizing that um, um, we're not all going to be here forever. And so we should just start to start to build our family other places. So it didn't have to just exist in Columbus, Ohio, where I'm from. Um, so that's, that's why. Um, and the second thing is, I've learned so much from platonic relationships, right? Growing up, you know, guys are on one side, the girls on the other side, you dig? And if you had a female friend, you were just kind of waiting, you know what I mean? You were just kind of waiting until she break up with him. Damn, he's tall. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You're a nice guy. All right, cool, Sean, you're smart. That stuff. Sean, you can do stuff. He's tall, though. He's really... <laughs> He's tall, he's got a lot of money. Okay, Sean, just say, hey, we motivate your speaker, talk, speak life into yourself, sir, you know. So everything would be like waiting until someone broke up with someone, you know. Um, but, you know, when I moved to New York City, this arts community, um, who really know how to do it, uh, I value all of my friendships because I've learned so much from women. Oh my God. In the age of, we always talk about you know, the future is female. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned how to be a radical uh, empath. Uh, so I've learned listening. I've learned not beating myself up. I've learned that from my, my partner, right? Not shaming myself so much. I've learned acceptance. Um, I've learned vulnerability. Um, and though you know, my male counterparts possess a lot of these qualities, it's, my, it's the female friends that I have around. Those are the ones that I feel most comfortable with, you know? Mm. And so, I try not to celebrate the most common denominator. It's like, oh, this girl looks like this. I have to have this person. Um, my friend Kazi told me this once, and I'll never forget. He told me this. He said, don't pick the flowers. Uh, and his idea was that when you pick a flower, right, as beautiful it is, as it is, you know, it, now the flower has a shelf life. And you ruin it for the flower and the community around uh, you know, and so his idea was that though you have these amazing people around you, like, you know, you don't know what this person's going through, so as much as you want to engage sexually with this person or if they want to do that, just kind of just consider it and go, am I picking this flower, right? He said, how dope would it be if you had just an army of people around you who were supportive, right, who you helped, and the story at the end of the day, right? And how you remembered as in the end of the day was either a mentor or a friend or a brother, you know, someone who gave something to them and didn't take something away. So I remember his conversation to me when I first got here, and I tried to um, I try to keep that. Right. I love that. I did pick a few flowers. I did. <laughs> I know what you were all asking. So I know. This is a while back. <laughs> Yo, that is so real though, because I have had someone tell me and they saw this photo of me and you mm -hmm. and they said, you know, this guy is the luckiest man mm -hmm. because he's your best friend. And he was coming from the perspective of if I decide to date you, mm -hmm. that means there may be an end date to that. And he said, any guy who decides to date you, they will have you in their life for a certain period of time. And then after that, you'll be a memory, maybe a contact. But he said, because Sean is dedicated to you as a friend, as a platonic partner, mm -hmm. he's your friend for life. Like yeah. he's got you in his life for life. For life. And I, that was such a reminder of like how grateful I am for our friendship. Yeah. Like, it really is like for life. Yeah. I tried to date a friend um, <laughs> years ago when I first moved out there. You know who you are. I, <laughs> I tried to date. So, and she, she said something. She said something to that effect. She was just mm. like, well, when it ends, then what? And I was like, what you mean ending? We ain't ending? I'm a romantic. Maybe would have, we would have still been together, who knows, but if we weren't, if, we're, you know, if we had to break up, then we had to face all that up. And by the way, you know, you know my story, you know everything about me, y'all don't need to know everything. I know what you're thinking. Keep the chat box popping. I don't even know where this is going. Uh, <laughs> chat box. 
we decided to uh, explore some things, and that person at the moment, she's no longer in my life. Wow. She's no longer in my life. Mm-hmm. Someone I still love very much. And um, exploration is important. I don't, don't do it, at the f- don't, don't abstain because of the fear of losing someone. That's not what I'm saying. Um, however, um, what I gain from my female friendship, my, my you know, platonic fr- friendships with my female friends, um, is just so much more. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You still get all the other stuff, you know. A lot of guys don't know how to give a hug to somebody. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, Helen gives the best hugs. Everybody. <gasps> Helen gives the best hugs. Hugs Helen! Right, just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, at our last friends retreat, we're all in the you know hot tub and just chilling, just like massaging each other, just like, you know, very friend-like, and that's, you don't get that, especially the, the household I grew up in. My mom was very stoic. So when my father passed away, I was left with this beautiful woman, nonetheless, and who really motivated us, but she wasn't very vulnerable, she wasn't very open, and she wasn't very um, physical. Mm-hmm. And so for a while, I only looked for women who were cold, stoic, who weren't physical. So I didn't know how to even be physical with people, mm-hmm. right? So when someone's being physical, I'm like, I know what time it is, let's go, mm-hmm. right? I don't know if you ever experienced that, Right, we just like you like. I'm just saying hi, baby. We ain't gotta just ooh, you know. Like my friend, she was telling me she's like in the morning. She said, "What? She said, I gotta play dead." I said, "What? You gotta, girl, I gotta play. I gotta play dead." <laughs> you know, we talking about? She said, "I gotta play dead because he's gonna try to wake me up for sex. I just gotta, <laughs> you know, if he knows I'm up." Uh, so sometimes I'm learning with this friends group that we're in sensuality as opposed to sexuality. It's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. It's how to be vulnerable and how you can be physical with people and demonstrate and receive love without that other stuff, right? And, and if you're out there watching, we're not talking about sex as a bad thing at all. In fact, I've been told I'm amazing at it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just in case you didn't sound bad, you gotta, you gotta leave some seconds after it. Oh you know. my god. No, I'm, no, I'm being stupid. But what I am saying is that what you and I have built is we got communities all over the world now, mm-hmm. you know? Um, we motivate each other. If I'm going through something tough, right, you won't let me stay down for long. You just won't do it. And I was going through a breakup situation. Danny was like, okay. She got my ass together. I left out of that. Where you know we were? We're in the cave. <laughs> we're in the cave. In the I cave. left out that cave just like, you know how you want to be like this? My tears was like this. They came right back. <laughs> just, just, just. Like, okay, I guess I got to go be something. No. <laughs> yeah, we don't let each other, uh, we don't let each other be down too long, all right? And so when you express something to me you're going through, I'm like, cool. All right, let me tell you what I saw. So having that to bounce up, that is, that is why I think that we have a, just like a one in a million type uh, friendship. And I've yet to meet someone who has what we have. Aw, I agree. Hey, this is Danielle Leslie, and I have a question for you. If you are a creative entrepreneur and your business is unique, why are you working with a generic accountant? One of the best decisions I made was who I would partner with on my taxes and my accounting. So if you're a creative entrepreneur, you are growing your business, you're scaling your business, I want to introduce you to Revel. Revel is a firm that can help you whether you're looking to prepare your taxes or you're looking for that year round support. They will tell you what's happening in your business and why. So if you're tired of being ignored, talked down to, or feeling like you are chasing around your accountant and needing to drive the relationship you're yourself, it's time for a change. Head over to revelcpa.com, R-E-V-E-L-C-P-A.com. Head on over, fill out their interest form, and make sure you look into working with them. Again, that is revelcpa.com, R-E-V-E-L-C-P-A.com. We all deserve the right firm to partner with. It's been proven that procrastination can be one of our biggest enemies to success. Now, contrary to belief, procrastination is not based on a lack of time management or organizational skills. Procrastination is directly linked to our emotions. Now, the reason I know this is because of Patty Johnston. Patty Johnston is incredible. She's a course from scratch member, but even more importantly, she's built multiple multi-million dollar businesses once she learned how to overcome procrastination.
So she's created a program where she shares her system on how to overcome procrastination, and it's based on emotional intelligence, neuroscience, and accountability. She's gonna show you step-by-step -step how to overcome negative feelings so you can start taking action and start seeing a difference from day one. So text this number right now to schedule an appointment with Patty and her team to see if this is right for you and what steps for you to take to overcome your procrastination. 813-789-1097. And again, the number to text right now is 813-789-1097. Let's all overcome procrastination together. Now let's get back to the episode. So one thing I appreciate about you is from the moment I met you, I was always inspired by the life you had created. And I remember we were in LA yeah. and I had asked you to come in and lead my team retreat. Mm. And you were phenomenal at it. And at the end of the retreat, you said we were on the rooftop at this beautiful Airbnb in West Hollywood. And you're like, all right, Danny, I'm leaving. And I'm like, what do you mean? You're like, I'm taking the whole month of December off. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? Because in my mind, I'm like, I need to go back to work. I've got to make this money. I've got to do these webinars. I've got to do all these things. And I see you saying, I'm going to play. I'm taking yes. December off. Mm -hmm. And that was so inspiring for me. And I think ever since I've known you, you've created this amazing life where you get to dictate, this is my working season. This is what I'm going to show up and this is my play season and this is what I'm going to do. And I would love for you to kind of describe like the year in the life of Sean Derrick. What does that look like? Post COVID or pre COVID? I would say now. Okay. Because uh, let me brag on you. Okay. <laughs> okay. When I met you, you were already an acclaimed international speaker uh -huh. making multiple five figures, whatever you wanted every month from speaking. You're like, yeah, this is how much I wanna make this month. I'm gonna do this. And your, your gift was in the storytelling. So not only were you speaking, you were also playing the piano, you were singing, comedy, like everything. And it could be kids, it could be administration, it could be CEOs, any room you went into, you're able to captivate them through your storytelling. And you're able to enliven them, shake them up, and I have seen you through all of it, always own that and introduce new ways like virtual speaking. Mm -hmm. I've seen you move from Harlem to Mexico City, create a community there. I've seen you put on the most amazing events. Um, and so I want people to know like, what is this life that Sean Derrick has? Like, what is, what is a year like with you? What are we talking about? Oh my God. A year of no ceiling. Yes. Okay, let's go. In a given time, my beautiful sales team um, send me an email and say, you got to be on the set of this award show. So I'm either hosting, emceeing, doing storytelling or motivational speaking for college students or high school students. I'm writing grand narratives for large companies to do like upgrade or do a rebrand for their, for their organization. Um, doing silly content online that makes me... You know, laugh and brings me oh joy. Oh my gosh, yes, we <laughs> right. talk about that. Right, um, I'm storyboarding, uh, just all storytelling, right? That is what, I'm either traveling and making people laugh on stage and inspiring them at the same time, making in, impact and income, or I'm living in paradise, um, writing funny sketches, but wow, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Yeah, I guess, uh, that's, that's okay. Uh, that's, yeah, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> What you add to our friend birthday celebrations, oh, I told them about the love languages oh, that you created, that whole experience you created. Um, I haven't talked about the party that never happened. So I think one thing I've gotten from you, which I'm fascinated by is identity and how we can choose a new mm -hmm. identity to embody it from moment to moment. You know where I'm gonna go with this story. Mm. Danny wants me to tell the story. Danny. D shows up at this party in character, which was You gotta tell him what the, okay. you want me to tell him or you gonna tell him? I'll tell him. Go ahead, <clears throat> tell him. All right, so this is very important. A week before I throw this party, my partner's in town and 
I want to see if I can. I want to see if I can trick her. What I mean by that is, I want to see if I can actually surprise her before I put this work in. So I decorate the entire brownstone when she's gone for an hour. She comes back. And she's like, "What is going on? I'm dressed in a different outfit." I'm like, ma'am, back up. Back up. I'm in a cop outfit. And then she goes, "Sean, what are you doing, ma'am? Are you on the list?" She goes, "Yeah." <laughs> like, cool. I go and change, come back in another outfit. I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, he does it everybody. Come in quickly, come in, come in. There's an outfit on the, on the back of the door. Go change, you're fine, right? And it has a note, come down in 20 minutes. She changes, I'm in a different outfit. I changed four or five times that night. You did. And there was no one in the brownstone, by the way. It was just <laughs> me and my lady, just, I got her. So then I hit up Danny, I hit up Jazzy, right? I hit up Kathy, I hit up like all of our friends. I hey listen, I'm trying to throw this really weird Obscure party, are you down? Everyone's like, yes, I'm like, cool, going character play. It's called The Party That Never Happened, all right? So what it is, you are all transported here, right? You don't know where or why you came here, right? It is your duty to find out why you all been transported here to this party and this timeless tavern. I hired a person to, do, um, to be the bartender. His name was Doppler, right? And you have these porter particles, right, that you can open and it tells you, little commands to keep the party going. So it might say, you have to make everyone sit on the floor, close it, and then you have to make everyone sit on the floor, but you have to do it very creatively. So the characters came in, they all couldn't not, it don't matter if they knew each other or not, they couldn't look into each other's eyes as if they knew each other, right? So that look of fam familiarity could not be there. Mm -hmm. So they all dressed in these different characters, they all got there when Danny showed up, right? And by the way, my partner's not here at the time, she stepped out, right? I knew I could trick her now. She comes in, whole place is lit, Danny comes in, and she just, for a second, and she saw me in character, she goes, oh, okay. Let me tell you, this girl goes, she changes, and she goes so into character, so much so. I tried to talk to her a couple times, like, oh, you still in character? <laughs> We're all set in place, and then my lady gets there. I'm in the outfit again, she's with my friend Amira, she goes, oh, damn it. He does this thing sometimes, he plays dress up, I don't know what's, up. But, baby, can you just please let us in? I grab Amira, she comes in. Right? Because she doesn't realize that Amira's in on it. Mm. So then we all get into place. She has now a new outfit. She changes into her princess outfit. She comes down. Everyone's applauding. Everyone's throwing flowers at her feet. We're all in character. We all have all of these, and that is the party that never happened. And in the middle of the entire party, right, they hear this bell. Everyone freezes, and Doppler, who's now on Broadway, he's doing Little Shop of Horrors, he sings, he belts. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Sings the most beautiful song. And we all freeze, and none of the characters knew this was going to happen. And then we go back to the party. And uh, anyway, so to that, the idea is I've always wanted to throw parties I wanted to be invited to. So when I first moved to Harlem, I'd heard about the Harlem Renaissance. And then no one was throwing these parties. And so I started throwing jazz parties because I wanted to be invited to these parties. Either I wasn't cool enough, people didn't know me, or these parties didn't exist anymore. And so the party that never happened was, what if, what if we just did it, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, Danny, if I do this, will you show up? And Danny's answer is always yes. Mm -hmm. So with the Love Languages party, it's always really about the yes, mm -hmm. this, the yes, you know? And when, you know, Shonda Rhimes came up with Year of Yes, I had come up with this horror part show episode called The Year of No, and I was just like, stop saying no, or stop saying yes all the time, Year of No, like please, you know, somebody, you, you said no enough to get here. That's very important. But the reason why you wanna say no is so you can say yes to these types of things, you dig? Mm -hmm. uh, there's this idea of play that I'm really into, man, and that mm. is, Shy used to say, um, she would say, her mom, Shai's my partner, her mom would say, all right, guys, um, uh, they'll be at the park. It's time to go, it's time to go. Why, mom? Five more minutes? You've had too much fun, too much fun, let's go. This, too much fun, what is? Mm. And so she was taught at a younger age that you can actually have too much, too much fun. I don't know what that is, but you can have that, right? And we've all adopted that of sorts. How do you have too much fun? You can figure it out. You believe, like, oh, you're going? I don't know. That sounds like a lot. I'm going to get my go to sleep. You, you, you know it's Friday. Now, I know it's Friday, but I'm just going to just rest up from for Monday. I got a Monday coming up, you know. And 
And with this friends group, we don't miss any time to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if this was your last day? Mm. You know, you like, I did, I did get a good night's sleep. It's nice. I remember I held Tess from Mariam. She told me that she said, you will never, ever, rem you, you said, you'll remember great parties, but you will never, ever remember the last time you got sleep. a good night's sleep. I never forgot that. Mm. So that's what we offer. It's like, you know, can you say yes? And if I come up with a dope idea, you know, you need somebody to say yes, because mm -hmm. I, I love to play. But I'm like, yes, okay, cool. I'm like, all right, you a tree. You're like, what? Tree. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, just do it. Okay, just say yes. Yeah. That's the party in the rabbit. I love that. That party was actually a pivotal moment for me because you invited all of us to embody a character in any time in history. And that is huge for me, right? Thinking about past, present, future. And he said, you can choose anybody from past, present, or future. Tell him, D. Body. Tell him, D. Go and tell him. And I chose Josephine Baker. Josephine I Baker, I watched her documentary. I researched her. And Come I said, on. oh, this is my spirit animal for the party that never happened. Who's my spirit animal? Yours, Prince. Mm -hmm. Come on. And I dressed as Josephine Baker. I got the finger waves wig. You know what I'm saying? She came with the old school flapper outfit with like the finger waves. We could not believe it. And she would not break character. Danny, she ain't looking. Danny, somebody call her Joe so you can come over here. I got, I got time for this. Somebody, just, Danny, Joe, Joe, yes. I'm like, okay, all right, just enough. And you, what you did is you created this space and you gave us the invitation to embody that to the fullest, even yeah. with your game with the porta particles mm -hmm. where we picked up the paper and I got that one where it said you need to sing for the next two minutes straight. And so I found myself singing. Singing it up, hello, I, I'm practicing because yes. I am a singer and I'm taking opera lessons. So for the next two minutes, I was singing an opera. <laughs> yeah. In, as Josephine Baker as Josephine and explaining Baker. why. And it was accepted because it's like, oh, obviously she's practicing for opera. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. You were super motivating that night. Mm. Like, what, what about Josephine Baker for you caused you to motivate every character that night? I mean, when I think about who she is, she was a reverend. Yeah. She didn't, she created her own rules. Um, she was led, as I saw, by her inner authority, by self-expression. I remember in a series on HBO, I'm forgetting the name of the series, but she was in one of the episodes and she was performing on stage. She had all these amazing women and she was empowering them. So I just saw a lot of what I want to embody in her. Um, and so I think that night I was just showing up as her and me, which is I'm fully expressed. Yeah. If the instructions are to get everyone to sit on the floor, I'm going to invite everyone and say, this is a dance I've learned in Paris. I feel like I'm on the streets of Paris. Will you guys join me? Let's all dance. Let's all, and then I dance all the way to the floor and then we're all sitting on the floor. It's being in the moment and asking yourself, if I do this, am I inviting others to also yeah. embrace who they are more yeah. than they would have? Yeah. I mean, you nailed, you know, we still talk about this. Yeah. It was so fun. You nailed this. Uh, it's interesting you putting on that character, you know, People who've taken acting lessons have gone to school for it, right? They'll, they'll say, acting isn't pretending, it's being. Mm. Yeah. Be it if you're doing method acting or not, you're being the character, not pretending to be the character. Uh, and so when we saw you do that, like you being that, like you, you can do this. You don't have to pretend this. And it, it actually changes everything. You know, whenever I get ready for a party, right? I'm so excited. I know I'm going to play a character, even if you're calling me Sean. I'm playing a character, right? Um, and I do, ever so often, I go by different names wherever I am, you know. Um, Gift is what I go by mm -hmm. uh, in Mexico. Because it reminds me, and labels are important. Names are important, right? So if you want to change a name, damn it, do it. It doesn't matter, mm -hmm. you know. And I say that because when I was younger, I was labeled, um, you know. Uh, they thought I was like, okay, well, he's not getting these types of grades, so he, maybe he's not smart, right? And, you know, I often tell, you know, administrators, teachers, people who work with kids, you know, if you label, you know, a plastic bin as trash, what does everyone else do to it? 
Mm, throw trash in it. Easy. You know, and it's a bin, you know. And so whatever you're labeled as, it's really easy for people to fall in line, right? And so you should be, in fact, working on your labels and should be, in fact, working on your titles and your name. When I was at the bank, before I was speaking, I took my business card, right, that said retail sales and service representative, which is basically, that's just a teller, and I cross it out. And I was like, it's not cute at all, isn't it? There's too many words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I put a title, I just made one up, right? What was it? I, at the time it was a, it was like a branch business banking something, right? Mm. I don't know. It, but it's, it felt better yeah. than that. Mm -hmm. And I wrote it in and I did that to all my cards, right? And so I knew that if a customer would ask, what's this? I'm like, oh, d no, that's right. Oh, it's crossed out. Oh, yeah, I got a promotion. Mm. I got a promotion. So at 22 years old, right? Uh, I got two promotions. Uh, at 23, I left my job. And it was because I changed my title. Wow. That's what I really think happened. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, the Stanford um, experiment, I think it was 1979, if we were wrong. 69. I think it's 69. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> Stanford experiment, what they did was that they, they had a group of people, random people, and they gave them roles. You're going to be prisoners, and you all are going to be guards, right? Mm -hmm. What they found was staggering. It was um, unbelievable. What they found is people fell into those roles seriously. Wow. And people were like, the, 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 they were like punishing the, guard, the, the prisoners. People were like, give me some water. I can't use the bathroom. And they were like punishing. They were taunting them. They were torturing these prisoners. Regular people, right? That's what the guards were doing. What's more interesting to me is that the prisoners were letting them. Because mm. you're, you're a prisoner. Mm. It's just rolls. You dig? Wow. You ever go to like, you know, if you're out in LA or if you're out somewhere and you're driving somewhere, there is not a car in sight. And you're sitting at the red light and be like, man, ain't no, there's uh -huh. nothing keeping me from right. going through this red light. Ain't yeah. no cameras. I can just, mm -hmm. I'm still sitting here. Right, yeah. that, that, is, that is the absurdity mm. of rules, labels, mm. confines, borders. We all obey them, right? And we've been taught to obey them. So just imagine that if you changed your own, right? Because you obey, you obey, right? Those types of rules, change your title and see how you act, right? Mm. For example, right? When you put a dress on that you like or is an outfit on, you're like, how do you stand, right? Are you slumped down, are you slouching, or are you erect? You dig what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if an outfit can change you, imagine if a title, right? Or how someone addresses you can change you as well. That is why I think those types of parties are important though. You know what I'm saying? I love that. What I'm hearing is that is our ability to choose our role, know that we have that authority, that agency to say who we want to be. Yes. And that helps determine how we show up. Yes. And so I'm curious, we're here. Where you are in your life right now, what is a role you are transitioning out of? And what is the new mm. role you're claiming? What is that new title? That's a beautiful, beautiful timing. On our last retreat, we were doing like the new moon, mm -hmm. and I was I had everyone write down what they would like to bury, yes. right? So they they're no something that's no longer serving them, and then what they like to grow, like what they would like to grow from that. So what I'd like to put down, what I wrote was I, I put to death um, doing everything myself. Mm -hmm. You know, even mm -hmm. though this is a generation of the multi hyphenated, I didn't know how important having a team was. Mm. Right, and my excuse was, ah, they're not gonna do it like me. Well, let's hope not. <laughs> That's so good. Because right? you got you where you are, right? Mm -hmm. One of my favorite book titles I've ever heard of was, "What got you here won't get you there." Mm -hmm. uh, and so now um, I said, okay, I'm not. I'm, I'm putting a death, not needing a team, doing everything by myself, and now I'm welcoming. Right, I'm growing into fostering relationships with those who can really help um, get this vision and purpose for everything I'd like to do right next out. And so I see that now. So now I'm, I'm making friends with everybody. You know, the funniest thing today, I've met so many amazing people on the way here. Really? Yeah, on the way here, I'm not even kidding. Okay. Uh, I gotta look up his name, because I know he's, he's pretty, he's a somebody, he is. I, I was hanging out in line, I'll show you this inbox. I was hanging out with Lion with this person in the store, and I'm just teasing him. Someone goes in front of him, you mind if I, uh, 
I just, I just bought socks. You mind if I go in front of him? He goes, yeah, it's fine. You go. And I go, uh. <laughs> you mind if I, uh. He looked at me like, I was, I was just kidding. I just want to see if I can get away with it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just playing. We talked. He's so cool. Uh, you know, he's like, well, yeah, hit me on IG, homie. And, you know, he didn't say homie. He wouldn't have said homie, but he on IG. Uh, cool. All right, great. I saw him. I'm like, there's a lot of people. You know, I said, oh, okay, cool. And I showed Shy. Shy is like, that's who you met? What was cool about it is that um, there is a, I do believe there's a vibration. I only have proof from my own life, by the way, mm -hmm. um, is that when you make decisions, right? Then uh, a lot of people think the law of attraction is you attract the things that you most think about. Right? I believe differently. I believe that there's something in your brain called the RAS, your reticular activating system. And how the RAS works is it allows you to see the things, right? Now that you can see them. So if you're driving a red, you know, Mustang, you see other red Mustangs on the highway, perhaps that you've not seen. Mm -hmm. So then it tells you that your brain's dumping information at an unbelievable rate, right? Because it has to take in a lot. And now it helps you real, or it helps you recognize all the things that you want to and focus on those things. So instead of you attracting it, you're attracted to it. That is how I think mm -hmm. the law works. So now all of a sudden, here I am talking to this famous director, right? Wow. Ooh. When I just put this, we just had the new moon. I didn't even know. Wow. Then I sit down, Cindy Winters, I was hanging out with Cindy. Yeah. I just saw her, then I sit down, and someone said something to me. And I'm like, what is going on, right? Now I've got these, my, my core, I guess, is open for these opportunities because I made a decision not to do everything myself. Mm. So that's why things happening right now. Mm. Yeah, so I, I'm, I am, I accept all f forms of payment from the universe, right? I love that. That's one new thing. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna take some more. Normally, I, I was like, drink alone. I was like, okay, Sean gets here. We're gonna be jumping on the couch. We're gonna oh, be running yeah. around. Did you want me to do the full? Okay. I mean, no, it's just the what I'm used to. Or oh, like I know. Visualization, you know. I was trying, you know, it's a while because I try to watch Danny's eyes like you doing too much. I just, just really no. No, but she's never done it. So Sean. I try, like, you know, Sean. Yes. When has my barometer for doing the most That's so true. ever been That is so true. Too much. There's no such thing as too it's much. So true. Never too much, never too never much. Never too much. So the most is the norm. The most you is the norm. You know what I'm saying? Like the most is the norm. Cuz what we want to give people a glimpse of uh -huh. is our friendship and like the how nature. we typically hang out. Okay. And it's always like da, 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 you know? Mhm. Mm the most is the norm. That's my new tattoo. Uh, Speaking our tattoos. Of. Yes, we can share that. <laughs> yes, I got a tattoo with this woman. We have matching. You're the only person I have a matching. You're definitely the only person I have in the same set. place. You have here, here. Oh yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Got mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Because you have my back, and I have your front. That's right. So we have this. Um, so our, our the symbol of it is. It's imagine the eleven. Right? Danny said something really crazy. It was amazing, right? And by the way, crazy, I love the word crazy. So when you hear me see crazy, it's always a compliment. The idea is that if you have crazy ideas, usually it doesn't mean that you're out of your mind. It means that you're out of someone else's. Mm -hmm. So Danny's like, okay, in my universe, one plus one don't equal two. In my universe, one plus one equals 11, right? I need to have someone that I'm running with side by side. I was like, well, damn it, I know what this tattoo gonna be. We yes. both were like, we're getting the number 11 on our arm. Mm -hmm. And we did. We did. And you I found the like, place. And yes, it was so dope. It's, listen, I, I think Helen found a place. Oh, really? Ah! Sean. I didn't do be, it. I be didn't. be outsourcing to Helen? No, I didn't. <laughs> Probably. Sean, you found that. Helen, Helen dressed me today. Helen, <laughs> Helen burped me. Helen. <laughs> Helen does everything. Helen. <laughs> okay, so Helen found an amazing place <laughs> where we got our tattoos. Yes. That is a tattoo, and Danny is a G. She is such a G. I don't know where you store your pain because she went first. I was like, okay. Cute. No tears, nothing. <laughs> then it was my turn, and I was like, do you not like me, sir? Do you not did I do something to you? I thought I'd, I'd nod to everybody when I walked in. He was just continued to dig. I was like, this is, 
I don't feel like he's even halfway done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but those tat everyone asks about this tattoo all the time. They ask about this. Mm. If I were to be completely transparent, it is seeing what you've created and seeing what you work on. And seeing that you know how to take a healthy break and jump back in, the one and one to me, going parallel, is to remind me to keep up. Mm. And I don't mean keep up with the Joneses. I'm just literally like, hey, listen, see what she's doing? You can do this too. You can. You can. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And that is what parallel into infinity we go into the end of time. Wow. That is what that means to me. Wow. Every time you do a new project, I'm like, <sighs> I was gonna take Tuesday off, <laughs> but uh, that—that's what that reminds me of. And I tell everyone when they ask what exactly what this means wow. and what you mean to me. So, yeah. I know that my year of asking the question and being in constant inquiry of who am I was largely guided, supported, curated by you. Um, I learned from you how to turn friends into family. I now have a group that I consider my family and we do our like group birthday trips. We have these amazing experiences because of you. You've really like talk about keeping up. I look to my left and I'm like, oh wow, like Sean has really created a safe space for everyone to be, to be their fully expressed selves, to claim that new role, claim the new identity. That's why I go back to it. Like I said, Danny called me out for being an ass the other day. <laughs> But we can have those honest, that's what I love about our I friendship. I didn't know. We can have our honest conversations. I didn't know, cuz just tell everybody. Oh my goodness. Right. This is my second glass? <laughs> <laughs> Feels like my sixth. Uh, <clears throat> oh, just the first bottle? Huh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, we're in San Diego, it's a beautiful house. I don't want to have, I thought I had a great time. I thought I had a great time. I was going through some stuff, but everybody was. You know, me and Danny, we always find time to pull each other aside, like, hey, this is what's going on. I'm like, damn, okay, me too. Cool. Mm -hmm. Break, and we'll come back. Yes. So then we go to this workshop together. We hook up in the city, like, let's meet up in the city, go to the human design <laughs> workshop. After the workshop, we're sitting, just having dinner, and she's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I stayed away from you the other day. I thought you were really putting off some negative energy, and I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry what? Are you talking? No, repeat, repeat that, because I didn't hear my name, and so you came and told me, yeah, yeah, you were doing some, I don't know what you were doing, so I just, so you, you um, yeah, it was just, was, 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 so it was negative? Oh, it was awful, yeah, it was awful. Huh, yeah, but it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, but I was just, I was like, what, it's not Sean, but it's cool. And I was like, Danny, I didn't know that you could see that. Mm. And when I first said, I didn't know that you could see that, I think that you thought that I knew about it, but I didn't, I didn't think that other people could see it. And what I said to you was, no, I didn't know that that's what I was displaying. Mm -hmm. This is why friendships like this are important. I had no idea that I was displaying all of that negative energy that I was shooting. I wouldn't say negative energy. What would you say? I would say it was an expression, like a low vibration expression. Yeah, you did say low vibration. I like negative better. No. Oh, because positive, mm -hmm. negative, putting judgment, judgment on it. There's a spectrum, you know, really high, true. low. Really but what I'll say, <laughs> I'll say this is that we're probably the only ones who talk to each other the way that we talk. And I needed to hear that, you know? I needed to hear that, you know? Uh, I think most people watching, you know, would be a fool to leave your house without checking the mirror. Mm. You can't feel where the things are out of place. You gotta look at it. And that is what you did. You're like, hey, listen, I know you probably can't see this, no big deal, but uh, your collar is tucked tag in on me. That's what it was. Mm. You know, you didn't make a big deal about it, uh, but I needed to hear it because I couldn't see it. Mm. You know? yeah. yeah. Thank you for being open to receiving it. The only reason I, I share wasn't open. is because. I'm just saying, I was open. I was <laughs> the only reason I share is because I know you're open to receive it, and we have that rapport. Yeah. And I know like we're all and I would want you to tell me if my collar was looking sideways. Yeah. And if I was showing up in a certain way. Yeah. I think more open now. I was hanging with some friends. We're all everyone's on this like high vibration, like what's next, what's you know, since three thousand, everyone's on that. Um, a brand that we all came up to get no us. <laughs> it has nothing to do with me. I was joking. Uh, but I got this vision. Um, 
and we're like this really cool ceremony. I got this vision and the idea was like this big hand comes out the sky. It's, I see everything in story and it pulls this like this big raven. In fact, I, I would paint this raven afterwards and pulls this thing out of his wing. And the raven looks at the camera because everything is a show for me and says, thank you. And he flies away. I was like, what the hell was that? What kind of vision was that? And the idea is like when someone points something about you, right? That is something that you're displaying. It's not you, right? And your answer should always be, right? Your response should always be thank you. You would never get upset at somebody, right? If you're coming out the bathroom and you have toilet paper on your shoe, you wouldn't be like, hey, no, you got toilet paper on your shoe. It's like, dude, just, just say thank you. And that is what I'm learning how to do, right? Mm -hmm. And we open up to receive and say, someone just said something about you that is uh, actually um, keeping you from flying higher. You should be really uh, in a state of gratitude right now because you could not do with that stuff. So thank you again for being a mirror. I know y'all, listen, we're just loving on each other this entire episode. Right, welcome to a regular hangout. Right. You know. I'm, you know, just, we need some drama. Just throw a glass. That's it. <laughs> you should call me back. No. All right, so right <laughs> now, you know about the Tell the Truth sessions because you've now experienced yes, two or three of them. The first at my birthday party last year, which you really influenced when I did my limo ride, but you inspired because you said, Danny, what if you do this for your birthday? And then I did it for my birthday. I'm sorry. You said Tell the Truth? Yes, we're doing a Tell the Truth session. Do you see that? We also right there? have or back there? truth tattoos. We oh, that's <laughs> right. I have to tell the truth, and you I have tattoo. truth in Thailand. You got in Thailand. Okay, all right, cool. This is yes. wild. That's right. When I got my tell the truth tattoo, yeah, I shared it with Sean, and he said, "Do you know what this means? my tattoo means that I've had forever from Thailand?" And I said, "No," and he said, "It means truth." Yeah, this means truth. All right, let's do it. Truth is very important to both of us. Right. You've been here for my tell the truth sessions, and what I want to bring to my show is the Tell the Truth Sessions. Right. So I think you're one of the only guests who has actually done this in our group of friends, but oh. I want everyone to be able to experience this Tell the Truth Session. Okay. So right now, I will invite you, mm -hmm. if you're willing, to share a truth that you're facing right now. Maybe you haven't shared this yet. Maybe you haven't even shared it with yourself. What is a truth that you want to share with me? With you. Yeah. And four million people. <laughs> Thank you for calling that in, Yes, we'll take it. Four million. A truth that I want to share with you. It's a strange way to approach it, but Wendy, you know, I always tell a story. Yes. Wendy Williams once said on her show that when people get famous or they get rich or they become very successful, the idea is that they change. And then she says, no, people change around you, right? Mm -hmm. And my truth is that when you were, you know, on your grind and you were everywhere and your promotions were everywhere and Forbes had come out and you were just killing the game, I didn't realize that you aren't changing. I was changing. And I was trying to figure out how the hell do I keep up with this at this speed? And so I retracted for a while because I was like, what do I do? What if she's not proud of me? What if she doesn't think the world of me anymore? How do I? How do I? I think I'm gonna cry. You're the first person that you cry. So that is, that was hard, you know? And every time I would hang out with you, you hadn't changed, I had. And because you went first in this beautiful, uh, course designing business, I got a chance to see all of the successes, the mistakes, the mishaps, the pickups, right, the things you celebrated. And uh, when people started to change around me, I said, hey, I know what you're doing. You ain't got to do that, homie. Mm -hmm. I'm the same guy. And I attribute that to what I've experienced, not just you, from my friends who've gone on to have their own shows and do really well in industry. And so I, along with a lot of people, tend to back away because the idea is, damn, this person might not need me anymore. 
Because at one point, I showed utility in this way in this person's life. So maybe this person doesn't need me anymore. Mm-hmm. What I'm now realizing is that, because I'm from Columbus, Ohio, and when our football team, Ohio State Buckeyes win, it's like, I won. Mm-hmm. And so your success is my success, and my success is your success. And there's, though we are competitive, you know, is that I'll never let that separate, separate us again. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing that. I would hug you with these mics for mics a way. It's a lot are. to overcome. This, let me yeah. probably figure out. Okay, yeah. Oh. yeah. That's probably, should, that's oh, probably I love it. You. We should probably stop doing this. I love you so much. Thank you so much. Seriously. Wow. Dang, what does this look like? Break, break it up. That's what it is. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So imagine we have our own show, and instead of telling the past and the history, we're telling our future. So what we get to do in this segment, first we're going to cheers. We're going to cheers with one word. Where did I learn one word from Sean Derrick? And I use this everywhere. My team uses it. At the beginning of almost all of our meetings, we share one word. JP, our program manager, when she kicks off our student orientations, our sessions, it is kicked off with everyone share your one word. That's your legacy. That's why I said when you left Harlem, you didn't leave Harlem. You're still there. That's your legacy. Wherever you go, you leave you. So your legacy is in my entire company. Our thousands of students now know the practice and the ritual of one word. And it's larger than I thought because it helps us connect with our body, which I was trained to connect with my mind and have my mind be the ultimate superpower. And what I'm learning is it's in the body because we went to the human design you know, That's workshop right. we did. and Richard was talking about Richard that. Richard was talking about it. And that actually had me look differently at your exercise of one word. Mm-hmm. I said, Sean's one word actually helps us get grounded in our body and what we're feeling, which is the authority. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kick off with one word with how we're feeling. And then I would love for you to narrate the future. Mm. And speak about yourself in third person. What is Sean Derrick doing in the future? What are we doing? What we what we living like? What we feeling like? What does your life look like? Where are you living? Who you with? Mm-hmm. What you doing? Mm-hmm. Dream. Big. Bigger. Whatever. Yes. All right. What's your one word that you're feeling right now? Wow. Okay. My one word is launchpad. Oh. Mine is alive. Word. Let's go. That's how you make me feel. Alive. Always. And you make me feel launchpad. <laughs> I can't say it yet. <laughs> All right, transport us to the future. What is your drunken future? Mm. What's Sean Derrick about? All right. Where are we right now? What's happening? Um, I am walking into um, my building. I'm going up to the top to meet with my writing team. We have several shows on TV, um, a few shows on the internet too, it's, the idea is all streaming. Um, but we do content creation, we do, we've got a sector for motivation, inspiration, right, for education. So we've got engagement strategy for the Department of Education, so teaching you um, and, uh, techniques of kids, or to teachers, and to, so that kids don't get bored in school. We have content creation um, for my production company, and so we have a team, I'm, j- I'm just walking in just to meet with the team to see what kind of ideas they came up with. And I'm just tweaking them, not to say this is good or bad, but more so, hey, have you ever thought of this? And then they're running with it. So I'm just saying yes to a few projects to go on. And then from there, I'm going to award ceremony in which I'm giving awards to other members of my team in our uh, brand narrative department um, for working with brands like uh, Starbucks, like Tesla, I have vacation homes around the world. Yes. Um, and we'll actually start. Where are they? Because I'm okay. visiting. So mm-hmm. tell me. Um, Puerto Escondido, mm. Belize, mm. Uh, Bali, yes. for sure. Mm-hmm. And one, because it's just a fucking flex, Tokyo. 
Yes, uh, Tokyo. Yeah. I'm trying to go this year. Well, we should so go we're the inspiration. Year. Helen yes. was the inspiration for that one. Yeah. T- okay. She said we're going to Tokyo this year. Tokyo. Pull this out year. the R and D budget, research listen, and development in Tokyo. Let's get the team the, inspired. Let's Come get on the team now. inspired. Yeah. I'm meeting with uh, several directors from around the world um, to teach them my take on storytelling. Right. I'm the point guy for that. I'm the Russell Simmons, the thank you, good night um, of my company in mm-hmm. that regard. And most importantly, because it fe- fe- feeds my soul and fuels my soul, show. Sorry, feeds. No, I said that right. That was mm-hmm. a Freudian slip, but my show. I yes. have my own show. Mm. Oh, yeah. Starring my own show for sure. Do we have a name? <sighs> I do have a name. You don't have to share it. It's okay. I can share it. It'll probably change. Boom. Right. The show is I Am the Tiniest Elephant in the World. And the show is a guy going into marketing. He's got all of these great ideas. He's got no experience. Um, just, everything says he shouldn't do this, his background, where he comes from. And his, the, his success, right, or his survival is depending on his success in one of the most challenging uh, and competitive cities in the world. So be it here, be it Seoul, Korea, be it uh, Japan, it could really be said anywhere. Mm. Um, so it's a funny show about life, love, um, and the lessons this kid learns through telling story. Wow. That was clear. It's the first time I ever said it. No way! I swear to you. That was all in there already. It's in here. Because it's already happened. It's come from my sacral. Yeah! We learned in a way. Let's try. go. My sacral. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. I'm going to be visiting you in all the vacation homes. Oh, my gosh. Um, I love this new role of you checking in with your writing team, just approving, yes. adding a little bit of spice, yes. leading people all over. This is amazing. Yes. I'm excited for that. I'm like, uh, uh, I know, I know. Helen, I know you'll be able to. Uh, can you just talk to this person for me? They ain't getting it. They ain't getting it. Helen, can you, just, can you help them out, Helen? <laughs> Helen, I know you own several companies. <laughs> Helen. Why, why you, you know, Helen, you ever, you ever since you became, no, that's Daniel, you know Daniel's here. Helen, ever since you became president, you've been different. You've been different. I know I said people don't change, people around them change, what? but you, you, ma'am, have changed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, shout out to Helen. Can I ask you some questions? Okay, sure. Maybe one, maybe one. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Phone, I didn't know you was here, Mr. Phone. <laughs> Are you proud of yourself? Hmm. That is something I need to channel, right? It's not like a state. So you asking me that, I guess, yeah, I would say yes. Mm. I would say that last night I went up to my room and I was in my whole fit and I was reflecting on the night and the evening And I did think about what was in front of me that day. Mm. I thought about the amazing people I was surrounded by Mm. who were helping me bring this vision to life. I thought about the amazing people who sat on this couch, including the woman who made me, my mom. Mom was here. Yeah, she was. Oh, Oh, she gave the tea. (laughs) I can't wait to tell you. She gave the tea. She is the original gangster. So I would say in that moment, yes. And that's why I appreciate projects like this, I think, because in the day to day we can forget because we're in the day to day. A project like this, there is like a clear like crescendo. There is a leading up, like an aggressive leading up and an aggressive like ramp up. Mm-hmm. And then it's the whoo. And there's a clear we did it. So yesterday was like that midway point where I was like, oh my gosh. And it was like on the crescendo, it was like this point where the steepest part was achieved. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, tomorrow was just this and tomorrow's gonna be so much fun. So I was really proud. Yeah. You know what you taught me? Hmm. I'll never forget this now because I teach this to my team. That you decide when it's time to celebrate. You oh, decide that's so good. what to celebrate. So I'm gonna celebrate you. Oh! Thank you, Sean. I love Cheers. You. I love you. Thank you for being on. Oh, thank you. Sean.
Thank you so much for coming on my show. This has been a dream of mine. And when I thought about the people I wanted on this show, you were at the tip, 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 tippy top of the list. It means so much for me. I know you have so much going on. And for you to come all the way across the country mm -hmm. to spend this time with me, be on the couch, um, means so much for me, for people to get a glimpse at what I get to experience as your friend. And so for everyone watching, I'm sure that they want to know more. Um, you're an incredible speaker, storyteller, performer, and incredibly self-aware, and I think a model for so many people on what it looks like to really understand through and through who you are and how you can impact the world. So where is the best place for people to follow you and find you? I'm sorry, I stopped listening after you called me a model. Ah, did I call you a model? I heard model. Um, <laughs> nothing else is important. <laughs> SeanDerrick.com, S-H-A-U-N-D-E-R-I-K.com. You can follow me on IG, too, if you want to laugh. I like to bring joy, insert joy into every situation. I think that's the answer and the cure. I um, And also, uh, I'll, I, we launched uh, Speaker Hack, which is a storytelling course. So whether you want to get to the, you know, front of the stage or the center of the room, story is the most important thing. And if you can tell it, you can get a new position. You can find your purpose. Mm -hmm. um, you can find your place in life. And the idea is if you can be interesting, um, you have the attention of every single person in the room. And what you do with that power is your, your responsibility or your, your business. But that is the most important thing is learning how to tell a, uh, an impactful story. And so that's what we teach you at Speaker Hack. So come there. And they can find that at speakerhack.com? You know, I don't, the website has changed. OK. The website. Just, you know, check out IG. Sean Derek. What I will say though, so oh, word. when you just go right here, just this right here, below, Danny. Below. Why don't you? Below. I didn't see it the first time. I didn't see it. What I will say, mm -hmm. when you go to Sean Derek's IG, mm -hmm. you will see his ability to storytell through all the characters he creates. And then you will see the link to join him because if there is one person you want to learn from to be able to be a storyteller, whether it's becoming a professional speaker, making five figures, six figures, seven figures as a speaker, regardless of the audience, you want to learn from him. If you want to learn how to con conduct, create, control your story to sell brand sponsorships, to sell yourself as an actor, as an influencer, whatever it is, it's all the same craft and the same skill, and he teaches that in Speaker Hack. So check him out on IG, all right? And then you'll see the links to find him in Speaker Hack. That was amazing. I'm let me, just let saying. me do mine over. I'm just saying. If you want to create a. That was amazing, Danny. I'm just saying. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Listen, sometimes life be lifing, and we do not know what's coming down that road next. Well, that's what happened to me in 2016 when I was unexpectedly laid off from my job. And I was six figures in student loan debt, I had no savings, and I didn't know what was gonna happen next. Now, luckily, I had this little voice inside of me at that time that I couldn't ignore, and it was telling me to take the leap. It was saying, use this as your opportunity to build your business. Use this as your opportunity to create your dream life. And so I believe that life happens for us, not to us, and that nudge in my spirit, I should listen to it. Luckily, I did. Fast forward to today, I have a business that's made over $20 million, and I've helped over 10,000 people create their online businesses and their dream lives. So do you want to learn how to turn your story into an online product and launch in 30 days? Head on over to coursefromscratch.com forward slash since 3000. I want you to join us on this journey so you can listen to that little voice inside of you too. So go now, do yourself a favor, coursefromscratch.com forward slash since 3000.